Hello and welcome to another edition of Cognitive Geology. My name is Luke and today we're following up on our previous video where we talked about some of the challenges that can arise from using defaults in property modelling by giving some ideas about how we could do better. Uh, particularly what we're trying to do is to take back the geology, get it out of the, um, uh, out of the hands of the algorithms and into the hands of the geologists. I'll start this off by just showing you one of the challenges that can arise if you use variograms to try to deliver your geological trends into the model. Um, and so what we'll use for an example through here are two coarsening upwards sequences where we have uh, two power sequences of uh, say shore face system coming through here uh, observed by these four wells A1 to A4 um, and let's see what would happen if we tried to distribute those purely with a variogram, those, that particular pattern. So if we did a variogram analysis and found that at some distance s we no longer have any information um, uh, in, the, in the model from the, uh, from the observed points, what's going to happen in a typical SGS type implementation is once you get away from the well control, away from the distance um, of your variogram, the, the algorithm is going to try to search to find a value to put there for you. Now if you are thinking along a k layer, um, as it's populating around the wells, it's consuming the data that it's observing in the nearby values uh, out of the histogram. So in the areas between it, it tends to fill it up with the other end of that histogram. Uh, and that, in this particular case, would result in a low value between these wells at that k-layer. And vice versa, at, these, at the bottom of the coarsening upward sequences, you might start to observe high values at that location. So importantly, we can end up inverting that real geological trend if we just let the variogram be the only way of distributing um, that sequence. In doing so, you can end up with um, some significant problems. From a flow perspective, you'd start to send the flow path in an elongated direction, so that would delay water arrival time in your simulation and increase your, um, your estimated recovery factor. So you really could be setting yourself up there for some, um, for some serious hurt when it comes to matching um, the real field results. So what should we do instead? We would advocate here at Cognitive Geology that you should be looking at describing the trends yourself explicitly in the models. This is where the geologist can try to instill their own scenarios of, of geological behaviours that they want to test and see what impact that has on your economic results. So an important suite that we often look for are things like uh, depth trends, uh, map-based trends, and sequence stratigraphic trends and correlative relationships. So when we look at a, um, at a particular vector, so something like porosity against depth, if we don't do an explicit model of analyzing that, um, we don't get away with it. We can't be the three wise monkeys and just ignore it because no trend is still a trend in these types of um, property models you're just invoking that there is no trend, that it's a, it's a zero function as a, as a relationship of that. So if you want to say there is a, a degradation of porosity with depth, it's a good thing to draw that in there, if it's a necessary thing. Um, invoke your inner license, uh, y equals mx plus c, um, you know, your artistic license, sorry. Uh, we don't get plus and minus infinity in any geological property, so we tend to end up with, uh, with shapes that are a little bit less uh, functional to mathematics and a little bit more organic. So be, feel, feel free to describe that, particularly when you're looking at correlative relationships. Let's say this was acoustic impedance against a porosity um, estimate. You might want to say, well, you know, we have information from the acoustic impedance within some range, but at other ranges it becomes relatively um, uninformed. Uh, likewise with stratigraphy, we often describe a, um, a type well showing the particular power sequences uh, that we expect to see in geology. You can invoke that in the k-layer direction by describing those functions um, in the way that honours the well data but implies the, um, the trends that you want it to be. Now these can all be very uncertain so you have a lot of degrees of freedom to try to map those out there so that you generate the scenarios that defend both the observed data but also all of your geological insight uh, and any external uh, soft control properties like a seismic attribute. And just finally, uh, one last point to, that we should uh, address is that in a poorly sampled data set, so a, a particular reservoir perhaps with, uh, with a, a cluster of wells along, along the crest, maybe one well down dip, uh, sometimes the sequencing order that you choose in detrending one after the other um, can actually result in a different 3D answer for the grid. So in this particular case, if we had this one well down here with a poorer quality reservoir 
it wouldn't be clear from the observational data whether that was due to perhaps a depositional direction or a burial position at a relatively deeper location. So if we started to try to understand what was in the north of this field, depending on what sequence we went through a detrending of depth first and then uh, the depositional direction, or you could detrend by depth uh, by de depositional direction and then by depth, you can end up with quite different answers. So these are very powerful ways for you to invoke um, different property models and test scenarios. And the important point is get it into simulation as soon as you can and see what impacts the bottom line and what's controlling the flow behavior of your reservoir. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much.